Hey everybody, welcome to Margaret Being Margaret. I'm alive. I'm not 100%, but I'm alive. I need to talk about a couple of things. Look at this, I'm directing traffic. While I'm talking, I'm probably going to start this, the family calendars I have to collate. There's 16 in each pile by month, and I have to put them together. I don't know if I can do that while I'm talking to you. So if I get, yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> all right, the plague, my October plague. Oh, thank you all so much. This is twofold. Thank you for caring. Thank you for sharing. That was good. And thank you for making me realize I'm an idiot. I have said that for 35, 40 years, every October I get sick. Everybody's always known it. Now, we know I don't do doctors regularly, but I've always mentioned it. I get the plague. I'm down for the count. I really think I should plan the funeral. It's awful. And for the very first time, one of the many reasons I'm so grateful for you all. I don't know why I've been so brain dead. Well, I do know why. I can explain. <laughs> I have an explanation for everything. Never did I think allergies. First of all, <coughs> sorry, I have allergies. And in the spring, I expect them. They give me a stuffy nose. I never associated the October plague with an allergy because it's so much more. You can't have a plague that's an allergy. You just can't. So many of you mentioned fungal or mold allergies in October. And all of a sudden, a light bulb went on. Like, well, truly, if every October this happens, it's probably something more than a fluke. So I read up a little bit on what you were telling me about fungal and mold. And I don't like to give up on summer and I love fall. So I keep the windows open. You know, I'm very happy every year to say it gets in the fifties before I, in the house, before I close the windows and doors. I've got that door right next to my bed and that's open all night. The windows open and I have the fan blowing the outside air in. Well, you know, if there's such a thing as those mold allergies and I might be allergic to it, dear God, I'm swimming in it. So the night of my post that I was so sick, I closed the window, closed the door, shut off the fan, closed all my windows. For the first time, I didn't wake up with a migraine and I felt better. And I thought, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So I got out the nasal spray. And I have nasal spray a prescription because of all my breathing issues that I'm supposed to do twice a day. No, twice, three times a day. Do I ever do that? No. And it's like a flow nase, but it's a, a different caliber. So I started doing that two times, three times. Twice, three times a day. Dear God. See why I don't do it? I can't even remember. I have had to actually turn the thing upside down to remember if I did it or not. I got some saline spray. Started doing that. I picked up a, another um, spray that somebody else had said for my throat. Not even 24 hours, and I was functional. Migraines, gone. Slight headache, coming and going. Still, <coughs> sorry, as you can tell, still the cough, but it's not the October plague cough. It's, it's manageable. I feel 80%, 85% back to myself. That was in three days. I've been an idiot for 35 years, and thank God. God, for all of you, for passing on to me what, what you've heard that it could be and what you've experienced. I'm an, I'm an idiot, but I'm a recovering idiot, so thank you. I now have to, do you know how hot it is for me to have the windows closed? It's pouring rain out right now. I want the windows open so badly. So about an hour and a half ago, I opened the one in the living room and I opened the 
the one on the door, within half an hour I had a headache, a worse headache. I think you get, I think you've, I think you've cured 35 years of illness. I don't know if you take my Medicare card, but I can pay you. I can get down to 50% of feeling good and I'll still be thrilled from where I usually go. So truly, <laughs> you might have changed my life. How do you feel about being that special? And you know, thinking about this, when I've gone to the doctors over the years, we have mentioned allergies, but it's just been in passing. The spring allergy day is what they gave me the nasal spray for, but I'm supposed to be on it year round. I will be religious about that now. But it was never my plague, and I've always called it that. You know, and I know when I went to the doctors a couple of years ago in October, I told them that if I didn't feel better, I, I had to check out because I can't live being this sick for this long. And we still never talked about it being just maybe allergies. And if we did, I wasn't listening, and that's a possibility too. Anyway, I'm going to live. Another thing, I, when I bought, those, bought the groceries, and 99% of you got it, thank you, when I said I spent all that money, I'm so disgusted with myself, and I always spend 50, and I spent 120, and people were appalled for me, which I, I, I was appalled when I looked at it, but you all got it when I said, I would never have spent it if I wasn't that sick. But when you're that sick and you have to go out and get food, you just throw it in the carriage. I mean, you could have charged me $500. I wouldn't have known or cared. I just wanted to come home. Good news is everything I bought, with the exception of the chocolate that I threw out because it was gross and it was $5 and I still don't care, it was gross. Um, I thought, if you don't like it, why are you going to eat it? Everything that I bought, I'm getting multiple meals out of. The spaghetti squash that I made into a kind of a casserole with some sauce that I had made, I'm getting four or five meals out of in the freezer. Um, I don't even know what else I bought, but everything, it's going to last me for weeks. Somebody mentioned trying Aldi's, which I've never been to. There's one near us, and I know I spoke to a uh, couple of people and they said it's hit or miss. So I'll go sometime and see if there's a sale or I'll look online. I haven't done that yet to see if they put up what's on sale that week. Maybe it's worth going, you know, once every couple of months. But I will de definitely check that out. One of the things that shocked me is I mentioned I was $3 a pound for butter and a guest from, a guest, that's my salon days, um, a what do we call, I don't want to say subscriber, a friend, how about that? A friend from Manitoba, Canada, mentioned that their butter for a pound is eight bucks. So I got to shut up and start complaining. The 120 I did will last me for weeks. Here's the next big deal. When I did the video and I showed you what I was paying, I showed you that I spent over $40 for over-the-counter meds. And somebody wrote, a couple of somebody's, that they were shocked that I didn't have an over-the-counter benefit with my Medicare. Once again, I've had Medicare since I was 65. I'm gonna be 70 in February. I am not an unintelligent person. I can't even imagine somebody who really has cognitive problems trying to keep up with the Medicare stuff because very honestly, after I signed up and got my first 40,000 page booklet on this is what you're getting. I, I don't look at it. I toss it. It is a waste of my time. Is it now? No, because I just learned it. I have that benefit. I've had it since I was 65. $60 a quarter for over the counters. I've been throwing that away. They sent me that card. I didn't understand why I had a different card than my regular I have Tufts, my regular Tufts Medicare. I didn't read it. I threw it away because I have zero patience. Shame on me. So I've been throwing that away. I did have to call Tufts and get my, my ID number. Uh, but you can bet I just stocked up on $60 worth of over-the-counter meds for this quarter, and I will take advantage of that. 
it would never have happened without this YouTube channel because I, somebody just told me. Shame on me. I wish I could say that the next time Tuff sends 6,000 page document on benefits, I read it, but I won't. I won't. It's useless information, except for those little grains. They did cost me money. So when new benefits come out, somebody's got to tell me. <sighs> yes, I'm mad at myself. I'm not even embarrassed because it's my nature not to look at the fine print. It's like, tell me, give me the, give me the bullet points and don't waste my brain power with crap. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You now have given me a $240 a year, $60 a quarter, monetary amount that I don't have to put in my grocery allowance. That's huge in my world. And yes, shame on me for not knowing. Now, I've talked to a couple people who said they only knew because somebody already on Medicare told them. So I don't know if it's just people like me who are too stubborn, busy, to read the stuff. But thank you so much. The last couple of days, I have done a lot of resting. So many of you said, you know, lay down and sleep. This is sad for me because I have been absolutely exhausted. I haven't taken one nap. I cannot lay down during the day unless I truly, truly fight with myself about it because I think I'm lazy. Now, don't even say you're not. It's okay. I'm going to give a tiny bit of background on that. I won't say a lot. Somebody asked me to talk about being married so young and um, how I feel about marriage and marriage in this century and what I say to people about marriage. And I have to be so careful because I was married for 33 years. I have kids and I don't ever want to be that bitter old woman. I'll be a bitter old woman for one minute and I'm not even bitter. But my ex-husband, because I loved my job, I loved the hair salon. I loved it, loved it so much, and I had such a good time there. He always told me it wasn't a job, because you don't love your jobs. And he used to pick on me and make fun of me that, you know, why don't you get a real job? Why don't you get a real job? Um, and if I sat down at the end of the day because I was exhausted from working, he would make fun of me for being lazy. Not even make fun of me wasn't in good, it wasn't jesting. And I spent 37 years feeling guilty, feeling lazy if I sat down and I'm carrying it today and I probably always will. If I'm sitting doing nothing, I have a real problem with that. Never mind taking a nap. Now I know I've been divorced for 15 years. I sold the salon. I'm retired my biggest fear is that I'm going to be lazy. I don't think that's ever going to go away. So I don't need you to say, but you know, you've earned it. None of that. I, up here, I know it. I know it in my head, but I can't. I, I, I think I'll always fight it. I've got to be doing something so nobody thinks I'm lazy. What, what are you going to do about it? The little bit I'll say about marriage whether it was back when I was, or when I was married, or today, is don't rush into it. Spend some time knowing your partner, because whether we like it or not, I believe that we, if we, as we grow, as the years go by, if we don't have the exact same, close to the same morals, interests. I don't know how else to put that. I think it is morals. And you, as you grow up, you grow apart. And one of the things that I could never reconcile is that my ex-husband and I were not on the same page with how we believed in things. So 
I think that's so important. And whether it was back then or today, you know, I have a couple of marriages in my life um, that I look at with such envy, and I think they know who they are, because they have heart-to-heart talks, they make sure they touch base, they have the same belief systems. Up to a point, they're not twins. I watch the communication, and I think that's the key. So I guess even if you're very, very different from each other, if you can communicate honestly and respectfully and respect each other's beliefs or thoughts or I think marriage is so important. I had planned to be married all of my life. I'm not sad that I'm not because I'm no longer being abused. And by abuse, I'm not talking physical, I'm talking mental. And no one would ever have known it. And if I didn't say it, no one would know it. And I'm sure half the people still don't believe it because my husband was very meek. Except in private, where he constantly put me down. And I come across as very, very strong, but I'm, I'm female. And I think most of us take it very much to heart. And, and, and it hurts. And I'll, I'll always carry that. So I think having somebody to listen to you or you listen to them makes life worthwhile if it works. If you go into it thinking we love each other enough to overcome it, I don't think it will work. You've got to find out how you're going to handle it because love alone, I don't think, will do it. So I would just say always move slow. And that doesn't mean I have beliefs about whether or not people should live together. Gosh, I could care if you ever get married. But a partnership, I think, is important. Unless it's not. It's no longer important to me. I am now finding that I really have somebody good to listen to in me. So that's about all I can say on the subject. For the rest of today, I am going to collate these. Then I have to make the... Uh, cover for the calendar and that I think I've designed in my head I'll show you when it's done and maybe beginning of the week I'll finally get to Staples so thank you all from the bottom of my heart you helped my health you helped my pocketbook now if we could only help my brain that would be wonderful take care have a great weekend I will talk to you the next time I do something stupid so you might as well just stay on here we can stay live at this point and take care i'm done <laughs>